and welcome to the post show for WWE Super Slam 2023 from Ford Field, Detroit, Michigan. And let's really quickly play what just happened to wrap things up tonight. The brotherly betrayal of Jimmy Uso to his brother Jay to make Jay lose tribal combat to Roman Reigns, the tribal chief. Incredible. The level of storytelling throughout this whole bloodline, this whole storyline has been incredible. Why? Love it. It's the icing on the cake tonight. And when you try to go and look back as to what they've been doing with the storyline, and this is not like where you're going to go ahead and follow along and it's like of the arc of the storyline going on. Remember, we've had the brotherly, the break off, the civil war, going back to the Night of Champions, where there was already the friction between, after the Usos lost, the undisputed World Tag Team titles. And then the breakup, breakup. And then you had that part at Night of Champions where as we know the rematch was not going to be against Santa Owens it was not going to be the Usos it was Roman and Solo and then while the Usos tried to go ahead and help out Roman Reigns starts going after Jey Uso and it's Jimmy Uso that's the one that witnesses his brother getting humiliated and super kicks a travel chief the first betrayal and the whole bloodline all together. When we had the real family sibling rivalry, that whole breakup was starting to go and come to pass. So now we're roughly almost three months later, right? Well, what? Two and a half months later. We're now at this point, and then Jay would eventually, a couple weeks later, turn his back on Roman. Thus, we get to our point with the bloodlines of a war and Jay being the one pinning Roman and then Jay almost getting the chance to do it again. The, the thought process has to be that Jimmy does not with what was being put on the line. Okay. I believe Jimmy and the whole talk they even had, even though they were together in the bloodlines of a war together in the United front, but when Jimmy got hurt, and then the thought process is that is who's going to be controlling power of the bloodline. And at that very moment, even with Solo coming in to interfere, Roman was still held out. And Jay was getting ready to go ahead with that pin, was about to go ahead and take the tribal chiefdom and the universal title with all that power to Jay only being the one to have it. Jim was going to be left out. It's as if he just didn't want to see his brother, his twin brother come away with those, those distinctions. He did not want to see him become universal champion, did not want him to become the tribal chief of the family. And so Jimmy decided to just stop it. He caused this to happen to stop the whole thing. And we hadn't seen Jimmy in a couple of weeks after getting hurt. And they pulled this storyline once again. And damn it, did they just go ahead and find a way to go ahead and pull this off and just, I mean, they really, what, how long was this match? About an hour long? The whole thing? Incredible. It really was, I mean, I loved it. This is where they continue to go along and build the storyline of storylines. I mean, you just can't ask for better. Everything's just working on all cylinders for this company. The best storyline in the history of the company. I'm going to, I'm going to say that I continue to say that. And they're just, they're not slowing down on this. It's not getting old. 
This is old school storytelling at its best. Because because of what happened right there. The the fact that Jimmy would stop this from happening, stop Jay Uso from becoming tribal chief, stopping Jay Uso from becoming the champion, becoming of the of the brothers to become the one with all the power. That's the problem here is a power struggle. Now, it's already bad enough that Roman is the one that holds on to that. But who else is there to become that? I think when you add the part of the wreath and putting that wreath, I'm not going to call it what they called it. But if they put that wreath on, that special wreath onto Jay Uso's neck, that's the part that Jimmy couldn't live with. <clears throat> that's my... That's where I'm coming across with that, regardless of all that. So better off that Roman retains and stays the tribal chief. You can't see his twin brother becoming that and him becoming inferior. So this is why they decided to go this route. I love it. As a storytelling device, fantastic. They just nailed it. Nailed the storyline. <laughs> You know what? I was kind of like, you know, kind of like a days ago with some of the matches tonight. But man, was I focused, targeted, laser focused on this match, tribal combat across. And it's that WWE style, a slowed down match, the way they set it up and they're doing their thing. And I'm looking, I'm like, man, they're just going along. And I'm just like, okay, roughly 36 minutes for the match. But like, remember the pomp and circumstance and everything else going on with it. It was about an hour and it was just fantastic. I mean, you couldn't have done it better. And I just don't know what you do now. Like the explanation for Jay as to why this goes on. And the question is at the end of the day, then who is the one to control things now with the family? If it's not Roman, if not him, who? Because that has to be figured out. Like, what do you do from here? The thing is, the bloodline now, is Jimmy going to go ahead and reunite with Roman? Because he did not attack Roman or Solo. All he did was do the same thing that Jeyuso did, where he came in, interfered, and walked away. And so I'm just trying to figure out here, where do they want to go with this? What is the decision that's going to be made with Roman now and what they decide to do next? I think one of the things they did is early in the night when you saw Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar, they got a 17 minute match out of it. I was amazed, but the storytelling in that, and that has to actually tie itself together. Cause I think Cody finally getting the rubber match tonight. And by the way, no stipulation, no gimmicks. They just went straight up. Brock Lesnar pummeling, 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 taking down Cody throughout the match and Cody finding the fortitude to come back and was not a weak baby face coming back to win. That's the part you have to understand. Cody, if anybody thinks that Cody was being booked bad after WrestleMania, that the fact that he lost to Roman Reigns, no. Or the fact that he lost to Brock once, no. No, what they did with Cody right now, they've actually made him much stronger. And I think if you want to bring him in again to take on Roman Reigns again, you can do that. I just don't know when you do it. Do you do that at the Royal Rumble next year? Or do you wait till WrestleMania to bring that match back? The rematch waiting all the way till then would be nice, but I don't know what you do there. So the thing that's with me is that I look at Cody Rhodes and eventually he's got to get Roman again. I think you can build things up to make that happen. And there's a lot of obstacles you can put in the way to make it where Cody has to go and take on Roman again. And then that, that, that match will happen again. But for right now, Cody's back in line to go after the belt, which could also shake things up for the bloodline. But in terms of the family part, Jimmy, I would imagine has gotten back together. I don't know how he's going to go ahead and, make amends with solo his younger brother. I don't know what you do with that part. And I don't know what you do here where Jay Uso is odd man out, but I will say this. 
I actually like the fact that now with the breakup, you know, the Usos were feeling guilty and they were feeling like they screwed up a lot. But now we're at the point where Jimmy, I guess, falls back in line with the bloodline. And Jay Uso can absolutely stay outside of the bloodline and be the main, and be a main event single star. Like there's not even a question right now. If the Usos didn't have to be a tag team right now, you could still have them at odds with each other. And Jimmy and Jay can have matches with each other and build that up. We could absolutely do that. But right now, Jay Uso stands out as a main event star. He was already that going back to 2020 when they were building him up to be main event Jay Uso. Like right now, he is at such a fever pitch right now at the peak of his popularity, the peak of fame. And just, I mean, the amazing storytelling, the work done in here, and the fact they're all, like, really, they're in the prime of their lives right now. This Bloodline storyline doesn't have anything that makes me think it should slow down at all. I mean, damn it, we can go along with this at least to WrestleMania. We can go longer. There is, n- there is nothing in my mind right now that makes me say Roman has to drop that belt. I think he does need to get another opponent. I think we now have a new contender, a returning contender in Cody. There is no one else they've built up to be in that spot. Maybe Seth, obviously, but like, no. Roman has only one opponent right now that's liable, that, that's, that really is qualified now and has been built up so well to be the one that can take the belt off of Roman and has to be Cody. He's the only one right now. And But then... What do you do with Roman now to try to resolve things up with the Usos? And I'm talking about Solo and Jimmy because Jay's out of it. I don't know what you do. But, I mean, does it feel like that Solo and Roman were kind of together now with Paul and Jimmy is now about to be welcomed back in and forgiven? I mean, will he have to be like, a prospect again. Will Jimmy have to work his way? Will, will Jimmy be able to be welcome back to the bloodline if he neutralizes and takes out his brother? Because Roman's going to have to put that out in front of Jimmy to make him take out Jay so that Jimmy can be back, welcome into the fold, into the family, and forgiven. It's to make amends. It's to make to make good with Roman. You have to take Jay out. So I can see where Jimmy and Jay now are at odds one-on-one, and we could have matches all we want on that. With Roman, you have to add in Cody. And Cody with Solo, you can also just keep him as a buffer and continue to do things like that. I just don't know where you go. But it's exciting, all this to me. It's well-done storytelling. And there's nothing right now that the Bloodline is doing that has, I felt like, has been weak or has not been able to easily be un- be explained. It's wrestling as it's meant to be. It's the best wrestling storytelling we can have across the board. As I said, this already surpassed the NWO of 96 from what was it? Uh, Bash of the Beach 96 all the way up to Star K 98. No doubt about it. This beats Austin McMahon. I don't care what anybody says. It does. And I don't think there's anything else I can see right now that makes me feel like it makes any much of a difference. It just doesn't. But this is just so well done. It just made Summer Sam that much more special. Like, you know, we've had previous years when Vince was in control. And you feel like, you know, the epicness of WrestleMania stands out so much. But let me tell you, man, that Ford Field crowd tonight, 51,000 more or less, but 59,000 that was announced. Let me tell you, that crowd was hot. Love this match. And this crowd got to see a great card. They, it was a very, an A, it was an A card. There's going to be one match that's going to, everybody's going to be shitting about. And I'll make my points about it now. Shayna and Ronda, they should have been much more of a formulated MMA rules match. I agree with some people on Twitter that, or on X, that we should have had an actual. UFC or an MMA official come in. We didn't need a WWE referee doing the match. I wish they would have had much more stiff hits on each other. They did, but not as much as I would like. 
And MMA, MMA rules match. We should have had rounds. We should have had rounds, make it, th- you know, five minute rounds and give them like 30 seconds to a minute for respites. I guess they don't want to do that because they want to keep it consistent because the wrestling crowd will not take these rounds and all this shit. But I would have preferred that. I would have preferred to go and do it like rounds, make it like that. Sure, the fight pit would have been great, but, you know, it's the same thing. My deal with this is, I mean, the right person got over. Shayna wins over Ronda. Now, does that mean Ronda takes time off? Probably. Maybe she's not here after this and Shayna now moves along and becomes a prominent women's main, uh, towards that main event of the women's division, which would be where she should have been. I don't know. I don't know what you do with her now, but I mean, there's something with her in that division now where, I mean, does her and Rhea Ripley become a thing? Cause she's on the raw side. Like I could see that happening. That'd be pretty cool. I think that's where you can go with it. I mean, that would be a, a you know, her or Raquel Rodriguez and you know, something there. Cause if Ronda's gone, Ronda's gone. But like I said, that was the weakest of the matches of all crowd. Didn't like it, but I was okay with it. I didn't mind. It was fine. So now you have, and you just look at what the programs have done to kind of reset. Because Cody's win over Brock Lesnar, that ends the program. And they made it a point where Brock Lesnar, after betraying Cody Rhodes in that tag team match against Roman and Solo, right? And for whatever reason, Brock... At the end of the day, he gives respect, respect, respect to Cody and lifts his arm up in try, you know, as the winner. And Cody is vindicated. And Cody has been the best book baby face since Hulk Hogan in this company. Do you understand how hard it is of any wrestling company right now to build baby faces? Because the baby faces were made so stupid and so weak. And Cody Rhodes has been made the best book baby face there has possibly been in this company in decades. It's only Hulk Hogan that was the baby face that was booked better. But that's like, that's just what it is. If you had to give me another one, I'd probably say Sting. Eh, with against the NWO. But really, it's just well done. And so Cody is now top babyface, and any thoughts that he had in the three month program that he had with Brock was going to weaken him or diminish him? No. So if you think Vince had some kind of say in this and he's all like, you know, putting his stamp in this that he's going to just beat down Cody, no. Cody obviously is being respected. He's being elevated. It's one of those rare things. All right. Cody Rhodes is in this company. He's doing better than he's doing than he was doing in AEW because in AEW, he was much more of a figurehead in the company. And then, you know, he comes back now and he has redeemed himself in the company to the point where he is now, you know, it's eventually a matter of time before he becomes champion again, but he wants to get it in the way where people are just asking for it. They're just begging to see this happen and people will put their hard earned money there to go and watch it. And that's what's going on right now. As we said, Survivor Series almost sold out. I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do with payback coming up next month, but obviously there's a few ideas you can go with right now in Pittsburgh and you'll set it up easily in four weeks. So among everything they've done right now, the setup for Cody and Roman down the line, Jimmy and Jay could face each other down the line. Now as the bloodline feud continues, and I don't know what Solo comes into that because the other thing is, is where does Solo fit in the Jimmy and Jay scenario? We have to wait till SmackDown to figure it out. I don't know what you're going to do about that. Now, I got to ask this question because the announcers were switched and Variety was the first place I saw it. Michael Cole now contributing the commentary on SmackDown, but in more of a analyst role while Kevin Patrick and Corey Graves will take charge 
on SmackDown instead of Raw. And then Cole and Barrett now work Raw. So to me, that tells me Raw becomes the A show again. And that makes me think that SmackDown is going to be relegated to a different show. And maybe we're going to see some change in the lineups of who's going to be where. Or there's not going to be much of a change. But because SmackDown's not going to be on Fox again, where does it go next? And will it be relegated to where Raw becomes the A show again? And does that mean where that's where Roman moves back over to Raw? I don't know. Besides all of that right there, that main event is, there's a lot right there to work off of. You got a double main event right now. I mean, you got a, a number of people that you can do with it right now. And then your main event scenario with Seth Rollins, Seth freaking Rollins right now, World Heavyweight Champion. There's a couple ways you can go with who could go ahead and take him on next and see where they go with it. And by the way, this also doesn't count all the stuff they have with Austin Theory, you know, as U.S. Champion. Or the buildup of Street Profits now under Bobby Lashley, feeling like they're doing another Hurt Business again and making the Street Profits serious. I love it. I love it. It's just, it's a surprise that it's Bobby Lashley now as the mentor for the Street Profits, but I love it. It's wonderful. I'm all in for that. I, I just want to see what that becomes because that's another faction that really is stimulating. It, it just, it's very, it gives, it just piques my curiosity. The judgment day tonight, another storyline being well done because now you've continued to build much more animosity where Damian priest. And by the way, Finn Balor is doing just fine without anybody else, without JD interference at ringside. So Damian priest comes out and it's the briefcase that leads to the detriment, the downfall of Finn Balor to Seth freaking Rollins tonight. So Seth could get the win. Seth scheming, being able to go ahead and take advantage of the situation and Damian priest just adding into insult to injury to try to bring that briefcase out there, to stir up shit. And it only affected Finn. As you notice. So Seth got nothing from that. Did was not affected at all by it. Was not dissuaded by it. Not distracted by it. It was all judgment day. And all that right there says so much. And now that continuation where Finn and Damien, as I said, I said this back at Money in the Bank. If you thought for one second that the plan, oh, do you think LA Knight being Money in the Bank briefcase, briefcase holder was going to be the smart idea? No, 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 no. See what I'm talking about? Listen, LA Knight gets his win. He gets a carrot with that battle royal. Good for him. But that's just a match for him, and that's just a chance for him to get some chance of a spotlight out there. But he had a match the other night at, with Sheamus, and he, he, he had a botch that did not look good, and it was on him. Just saying. But now I look at where we see Seth Rollins right now set up. The Judgment Day, that animosity is another issue with the factions having friction. And this shit here, they're basically doing what the bloodline is. It's taking the bloodline model and just doing a little difference to it. So the Judgment Day now at odds with each other. What happens with Finn and Damien now that they set this up? The fact that Damien Priest has held this briefcase has been great. It, they've done the storyline that should have been done if Damien Priest was going to win the briefcase. It's been great. All across the board, I love it. It's been fantastic. Somebody's getting the booking and the storylines down right. We could always have more time with Judgment Day, more time to build off of the animosity, more between them. But obviously, Finn had to deal with his things with Seth. And Damien was just, you know, was brawling for the fodder. And of course, Rhea and Dominic had their own things going on because they were down there at NXT and Dominic wins the damn NXT North America title. And I love that shit too. It's like, all oh, that's wonderful. Now, Finn looks inferior once again. What do you do now? What does Finn do now? Because Finn's going to be in a rage. And I feel like Finn might leave. He might defect from Judgment Day as a result of this. Like, will we see that coming up? 
will there be a betrayal by Finn as a result of this? Because I think what also could happen is, is that whenever Damian Priest plans to cash in that briefcase on Seth, Finn will screw it up. He will sabotage it. And that's also a good thing to do right now as well. All in on that too. You created two matches with the women that absolutely need something else going on. All right. With Becky and Trish, you know, they didn't put anything in this on tonight. That's fine. Read it and defend her women's world title. That's fine. But let me tell you when you now, I mean, they're dimension. I think it's Rhea and Raquel, right? So you got that coming up, but what they did tonight. So Bianca gets, you know, takes advantage of Oscar spinning mist at Charlotte, but because of what Oscar did to Charlotte, that sets up a program. And then once Bianca won, did we want to see Oscar and Charlotte in the mix with Bianca again while she's champion? No. But I think what they did tonight was absolutely wonderful. I mean, if you want to have EO finally do something with that briefcase, the right time, the right moment. And now Bianca and EO now have to have a score to settle. So you get that. And now Bianca has to deal with a full, a fully healthy damage control. So damage control is back together. They actually kind of did a good job where damage control has not been a great gimmick, the great faction altogether. But to be able to go and go from SummerSlam to SummerSlam from the introduction of damage control to seeing EO Sky get that briefcase, cash it, and become champion now. And Bianca and Dakota are back in, and there's a, reuni a reuniting. That's wonderful. They set that all up. Love that part too. There's matches and things that happen to create matches. That was also wonderful. Now, Ricochet getting a very good match, a very good match with Logan Paul to start off the night. Give credit by credits due right there. It was very good. A lot of time in that. Ricochet, we already knew he can always put out good matches. It's nice to see that he got the Logan Paul shot. Logan Paul getting the win, cheating with the brass knuckles. Hey, I mean, Ricochet and Logan Paul can continue. I'm all in for that. We can have that going on. I would love that too. So let's continue that part. But Ricochet, is this the chance for him to finally be built up? Because he's been nothing. And it's not against him, man. Look, the guy's talented as hell. But I didn't like for a long time what they've done with Ricochet. Putting him up with Braun Strowman last year, right? I don't like that at all either. But they've done nothing with him. Ricochet needs to get, get some momentum taken off of this right here because him and Logan Paul did some great work together in just a month. Ricochet absolutely should have the chance to build something more. Now he's been a what he's been an IC or a US champion, right? But other than that, let's get him in something here. Let's continue to do something with him and keep building him up the mid card. Like it's, it would be nice to see Ricochet continue to be in a spot. I like that part. I really do. And then other than that, Gunther now holding on to the IC title and looking to become the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion since the Honky Tonk Man, the one that has held the belt the longest. Let me tell you, that's wonderful. I, I love to gonna see how they're going to do that part and how it gets set up because I'm all in for that part. And I hope they do have a chance to give us the reins and just see how they far they go with it. Like, I hope we really get that part too. Cause that would be wonderful. Honky Tonk man's reign has been 454 days right now. And by the way, Ricochet was the previous IC champion. Gunther beat Ricochet to become IC champ. Forgot about that part. But right now, yeah, at the moment, Gunther is what at 420 some odd days and now gets a chance to become longest reigning IC champion. I want that to happen. I'd like to see that happen. So that's good. All that encompassing. What a damn good night, man. A damn good night. 
of wrestling. SummerSlam was an A show. I don't think Ronda and Shayna, because of the outcome, I have no problem with how the setup was. Was it a little bit slow and tedious? Yeah. But it really did not hold up, hold down anything from the rest of that show at all. At all. How is it going on with all this shit right here, man, with all these freaking pay-per-views and stuff? And then I got Collision to watch at the same time, which, you know, you, again, very good matches you had throughout the night. I forgot to mention about Hikaru Shida became women's world champion again. That was really good. And then I look at what they did tonight with, with Ricky Starks and the fact that he, you know, got really close to going to try to beat CM Punk. And now they have the real world title. I actually like all that stuff too. Let me, let me just say that, make that point too. I really do like that too. They set up more matches. So now we're going to eventually have CM Punk and Samoa Joe set up. But non title, I'm guessing I'm not I'm guessing either the real world title or the Ring of Honor World TV title are not gonna be on the line, which is fine. TBS title, Chris Statlander and Mercedes Machine was pretty good, not bad. Tony Storm now is starting to snap after she loses the car Hikaru Shida, which is great. Hikaru Shida. It's fun to see House of Black now in the trios realm and just seeing every week him them every week andrade every week cm punk every week miro love this shit i like it all really wonderful stuff and i must say this too i was not the biggest fan of ian riccaboni in announcing when he was in ring of honor like you know at the beginning when i when kevin kelly left and then ian riccaboni got paired up and i was like okay and then he gets in with caprice coleman and I will admit now, Ian Riccoboni and Caprice Coleman are very good together. Got great chemistry. But Ian Riccoboni, man, even Bleach Report talks about it, he's probably the most one of the most underrated announcers right now. Something about him being working in AEW, somebody's been working with him. Because Ian Riccoboni's gotten polished. And I'm going to say this right now. I would have no problem with Ian Riccoboni staying on collision and commentary. Him and Nigel McGuinness are money. They're doing really good. It's a good difference between what Excalibur does with Tony Schiavone and Taz. I got no problem there. Look, okay, that's good. That's good announced. Uh, good announced teams over there on AEW too. I like that all together. So collision was really fun tonight. Caught that. Did the, the two screener watching both of those. Right. And then a great summer slam tonight. And when I look at what's coming up, like, geez, man, I mean, more Saturday episodes are going to be coming up. Cause there's some way to get around it. I mean, I got just more to come up. So now we got through through SummerSlam right now, get a couple of weeks. And then I go ahead and come on back. They're going to do, well, there'll be a Sunday show, which is the impact new Japan pro wrestling show. And then the week after that, oof, we got, oh my goodness. So we got all in, right? Oh my God. So we got all in. On the 27th, two nights of NWA 75 and Impact Emergence. <laughs> like, what? This is crazy. Like, I mean, I'm going to get a week off, but then I'm going to have to go and go through and, like, go through a super weekend. I don't, I don't even know what I'm going to do to cover that weekend, but I'm going to have to do a separate show for NWA. Maybe talk about Emergence on that show. And then I got to do all in Wembley. Incredible. I don't even know how I'm going to cover it. And then the week after that, got all in Chicago. Like, I mean, the all out, excuse me. Oh, forget about it, man. This is just wild, really wild stuff. All right. Anyway, we're going to leave it there. That's the show for the night. Thanks for listening in as you always do. The website for all the content, all the rest of the podcasts, king of podcasts.com. That's where you find everything I'm doing. That's where it goes. And let me tell you, what a great night. If you didn't get the chance to do so, please rate and review Apple Podcasts or Spotify. I would really appreciate that. And find me all through social media. X, Facebook, Instagram, Trends, TikTok, at King of Podcasts. We'll come back Wednesday to talk about the fallout from SummerSlam. What happens on Dynamite with MGF and Adam Cole setting up their match for All in Wembley. And so much more. 
Come back for another Wrestling Through Podcast because wrestling needs us.